Joining us here in the studio is former State Department spokesman Jamie Rubin. Jamie, good to have you with us. So many eyes are on this situation right now, and Bill touched on a little bit of the response that we've heard from both President Obama, from Secretary of State Clinton, talking about what they'd like to see as a peaceful transition. But there's been criticism, too, that the U.S. message is a little too moderate. Is this the closest the government will come to asking for President Barr to step down? Probably. I think the, they're at the right place now, but they, it's taken them a while to get there. A week ago, uh, they were talking about how Egypt's government uh, under Mubarak was stable. So they've gotten to the right place. I think now the message clearly is to have a, a speedy transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not going to be that hard if President Mubarak gets the message. Well, that's the big if. And, and based on your time at the State Department, give us an idea of we see the message that's coming out. We saw uh, Secretary Clinton making the rounds on the Sunday talk shows yesterday. What's actually, actually happening right now behind the scenes to help that transition? Well, I think the crucial conversations are those that have been organized between the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the military in Egypt. We have very close ties to the Egyptian military. They train with us. We've been arming them and working with them for three decades. I think it's those messages that are crucial. One telling the military that all bets are off if they use massive force mm -hmm. against the protesters, but two, making clear that uh, something's got to give quickly. And then I think finally a time may come in the next day or two when the administration realizes it needs to send an envoy to privately meet with Mubarak, mm -hmm. lay out a much tougher set of uh, re uh, request slash uh, recommendations right. and get him to finally make the announcement that he's leaving. And in terms of those talks that are going on the military, one thing that's been really interesting, at least from an outside perspective, it feels almost counterintuitive to see the way the protesters seem to be embracing the Egyptian army here. Could it ultimately be the military that decides the direction of the country? Oh, I think the military will decide the direction of the country. First, they'll decide uh, whether or not they will carry out any order to use force if that comes. Mm -hmm. And two, I think they can signal to President Mubarak that he's lost their support. Now, yesterday, he seems to have it at the top levels, the F-16 fighters, the helicopters, the generals meeting with him. But on the streets, uh, he doesn't seem to have it. And so as goes the Egyptian military, so goes the speed of this change. Not the result of it, but the speed, but the speed. of it. So that's one thing to focus on. In terms of results, we've seen Mohammed al Baradai emerge here uh, almost as a leader of these right. protests. He is seen as being friendly to the, to the Western world. A lot of people in the U.S. know who he is. Uh, he, he's a Nobel Prize winner. Could he ultimately end up being the next leader of Egypt? Well, I know him very well. Uh, Secretary Albright, who I worked for, was the one who uh, approved his selection as head of the uh, UN watchdog, the IAEA. And my wife and I have known him for years. He's a very modest, moderate man. Uh, he's not a, a natural politician. I think on TV yesterday he used the word oxymoron, which is not exactly what populist leaders would <laughs> say. Uh, but I do think it's possible that he could be a compromise candidate as a transitional figure, has the support of uh, all sides so that they can negotiate. What's crucial is enough time before the next election. If they ran it too quickly, the only organized force in, outside the ruling party is the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and we don't want them to have a leg up. And just hearing those words really makes a lot of Americans afraid because they worry about a rise of Islamic fundamentalism. So we'll be watching this very closely. Thanks for coming by this nice morning. We appreciate your insight, you. Jamie.